Hello class, it's Ms. Augustine and today we're going to talk about the combined gas law. Now up until this point we have talked about three laws. Boyle's law which is at constant temperature and we said that pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. If one goes up the other one goes down that means that when you multiply them together you get a constant. So we write that as P1V1 equals P2V2. Then we talked about Charles's law, which is at constant pressure, and we said that volume and temperature have a direct relationship. When one goes up, the other goes up. So mathematically, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, which is equal to some constant. And then we talked about Gay-Lussac's law, which is at constant volume. Again, pressure and temperature have a direct relationship when one goes up, the other goes up. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So we can combine all three of those laws, remembering that they're all talking about a fixed quantity of a gas, so we're not changing the number of moles of the gas. And so we can combine all three of these equations into one single expression. And we write that as P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. And again, remembering that this equation is referring to a fixed amount of a gas, so P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2, which is equal to a constant. And that constant contains two pieces. One is the number of moles, which we're going to learn is uh, expressed with the variable n, and the other part of it is a gas constant, which is going to be referred to as r. So for now, let's solve a couple of problems. So combined gas law problem number one. For the problem, a gas with a volume of 3 liters at 40 degrees C has a pressure of 2.5 atms. What will the volume of this gas be at a pressure of 1.5 atms and a temperature of 90 degrees C. So for starters, let's identify our variables. So here, P1 is our 2.5. P2 is our new condition, which would be 1.5. Our initial volume is 3 liters. We're asked to solve for our final volume, so V2 is our question mark. Our T1 is 40 degrees C, but remember, we have to convert to Kelvin when we're talking about gases. And our T2 is 90 degrees C, which is 363 Kelvin. And our equation, P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. That's a lot of variables. Because we've got six different variables going on, it's incredibly important to identify the variables so that when you plug them in, they go in the right place. Now, I know that you guys do not like fractions, so let's rewrite this equation by cross multiplying. So now I have P1V1 T2 equals P2V2 T1. Again, I cross multiply. And if I'm solving for V2, which means I have to divide both sides um, so that I get V2 all alone, dividing both sides by P2 T1, this is now my equation. Now, plugging in my numbers, V2 is equal to my P1, my V1, and my T2. And over here I have my P2 and my T1. The next thing I'm going to do is cancel my units. So atmospheres goes away, Kelvin goes away, plug it into my calculator and I get 5.7987. Looking up here and I see two sig figs is what I need to round to. So my nine would be my last digit, excuse me, my seven would be my last digit, but the number after it is a nine, so we round up. And our answer here would be 5.8 liters. <clears throat> now let's do another one. Combined gas law problem two. So here, a gas that occupies 3.5 liters at 600 millimeters of mercury pressure and 22 degrees C. What will the temperature of this gas be if the volume is changed to 1.8 liters at 760 millimeters. Identifying variables P1 and P2. V1 and V2, again, P1 is 600, P2 is 760, V1 is 3.5, V2 is 1.8. Our T1 is 22, 
adding 273 to it, we get our 295, and T2 is what we're solving for. Again, our equation, P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2, rearranging by cross-multiplying. Solving for T2 is now going to be P2V2 T1 divided by P1V1 so that we get T2 by itself. So now we're going to plug our numbers in. So T2 is going to be P2 times V2 times T1 over P1 times V1. And that gives us, um, sorry, we have to cancel our units. So millimeters goes away, liters goes away, leaves us with Kelvin. Our calculator will give us 172. 192.17, sorry. It looks like two sig figs is the way to go. Our second significant digit is the nine. The number immediately following it is a two. Um, four and below, we let it go. So we leave that at 190. Remember, you can't lose the magnitude of the number when you're rounding. So this goes from 192.17 to 190. Kelvin. So these are two combined gas law problems. Remember it is incredibly important to identify the variables when you've got an equation that has six variables. That way when you're plugging the numbers in you're making certain to put things where they belong. This is Ms. Augustine signing off for today.